Hello, I'm Mark Sumner, host of the Channel Chat podcast show, and today I have the pleasure of Matt Poulton, the general manager and vice president of EMEA for Four Scout in the studio. How are we doing, Matt? Nice to meet you. I'm very well. That's a very enthusiastic welcome. <laughs> Thanks for thanks for making the trip from sunny Reading today into the, into the Channel Chat studio. Now, Matt, when I normally get a guest on, I normally go through their history and then think, why did they get into this industry? And yeah. you started in my industry, which I'm now thinking, how did that happen? So you did a degree, but then you went into recruitment. So tell the listeners from the beginning how, how that happened. Well, I definitely had less grey hairs then, but... Uh... I think like anybody, you need to find your feet. University is a great way. I went to university because it was sport, right? And it was a great way to waste four years of my life doing what I enjoy, which fun about them was drinking and playing sport. And But it gives you a lot of life skills. And my life skills, I realised, were talking to people. I enjoy social interaction. And it felt that re- recruitment was probably the easiest option. But I actually remember way back then looking at the soft cat graduate scheme and I thought that looks a bit like too much hard work <laughs> what's, this, what's this thing called cyber security don't really understand that and lo and behold here I am 25 years later but yeah recruitment is a great starting point to learn how to go how to grow up you need to learn to smile you need to learn to interact with people you've got to be professional it's people careers and it's a great way of dealing with people and one of my lessons that I've learned over the years is fundamentally people are the lifeblood of your industry. So yeah, recruitment was a great foundation. You said smile and dial when I... I yeah, realized. smile and dial. Why, why, why did you leave the industry? Um, well, look at you, Mark. You've been in it a long time. And you've got no hair and look... <laughs> oh look, my God! Look older than you are. Oh. So, no. Oh, Matt, you're supposed to be a nice guest today. What? Uh, I think... Uh, well, you know it's true as well, but there we go. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I think when you're in recruitment, I was dealing in tech and I kind of liked tech and thought, ah, oh, you know, if you can't beat them, join them. So then I went mm. into recruitment and then I went and worked for Xerox of all places because again, kind of carrying on that smile and dial mentality, Xerox way back then were really cool. They taught you how to sell. So I went from picking up the phone. Hi, how are you? I'm Matt. I've got this great job from you. No, bye. So you learn rejection, you learn persistence, you learn resilience. Yeah. So now I kind of want to learn how to sell properly and Xerox back in the day, a lot of the younger audience probably won't understand that photocopiers were the coolest bit of tech in the world, um, taught me how to present and do business propositions. So I kind of then kind of like tech, I like selling, not just people, but a tangible service and the value-based selling and the spin and the features, advantages, benefits, and all those things that all modern sales practices now are built upon and have just evolved. Yeah, because recruitment's quite a good grounding, isn't it? If you want to go into tech, you know, I I have a lot of recruiters have worked for me that have have suddenly gone into the industry. So when you started recruiting, did you suddenly think, you you mentioned Softcat there, you mentioned, oh, you know, I was interested in potentially going out, but it looked hard work. Was it sort of daunting to go into a technical role? Or did you think, actually, I might might give a kicker a career on it in recruitment? I think if you're a personal person, and I, I came from a sporting background, so, you know, teamwork, camaraderie, learning from defeat or you know banter all that type of stuff recruitment was a quite a good one because uh, you know what you got out is what you put in the more calls you make and the whole michael jordan thing the the, the more shots i make the luckier i am the kind of recruitment the more phone calls you make the luckier you become uh and that kind of taught me that my career will only be defined by me not in a silly way but if i work harder than other people maybe i'll be more successful and also you speak to so many people you learn from lots of different people about how, how their careers have gone and I suppose that's what kind of definitely gave me a foundation for my sales now. So yeah, it's a good industry, as what I would say. So then you moved into Xerox, and Xerox, and then you this this bring your career up to date. And then you you got into sort of cyber security, and that's where you, you you're obviously in now. Yeah, yeah, I fell into it. I, I went from Xerox into Reseller World. I spent about six seven years in Reseller World, and I'm kind of 25 year old sitting by a fax machine getting POs in for 10 million dollars, thinking what the hell's all this about? I kind of like this back in the day that you'd shake the fax machine and make sure it had enough toner in. Those are the days, where are my orders? It's nothing to do with me, it's the, it's the, it's the fax machine. Um, you know, back in the day. And then I, I was really lucky that I fell into cyber when cyber wasn't really popular. Mm. And it was my first kind of, um, I would say luck and judgment. I, I suppose, you know, I always had a, 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 a lucky sense for technology. And I went and worked for a company called PGP that was subsequently acquired by uh, semantic and learn loads about how do you, you know, take a vendor that's quite niche 
and selling it to some of the biggest companies in the world. What happens when you get acquired? What's being an acquisition like? And that kind of started my journey. And then I've been very lucky that throughout that, I've kind of stayed in cyber. And before you know it, you blink and you look back and you go, I've been doing this kind of 15, 20 years. One of the reasons I wanted to get you on is, is you've almost alluded to it there because you are one of the rare guests that I've had on that's been involved in an acquisition, um, acquisitions, also VC, also private equity. Yeah. So for the listeners that don't know, what is the difference between working for a company that's VC backed or, or private equity backed? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm people seem to think that I've got some sort of technological insight. I don't, I think I'm just very lucky, but maybe that's downplaying it. But yeah, of the last five companies I've worked for, four of them have had what's called an exit. And kind of three of them have been very much in role where I've seen how do you grow a technology and what do you want to do with it once it becomes a certain size? And a lot of that, what do you want to do once, once it becomes a certain size, depends upon who you're owned by. And let's be honest, there aren't really any companies out there that are self-owned. They all have a, a, an element of finance. And there are kind of two ways. There's venture capitalists and there's private equity. And a lot of my roles have been VC-based, where you know organisations really... Uh, a VC very much is a bit like, I call it a bit like spread betting and I don't want to do a disservice but what we can do is we're going to go and invest in 10 companies and we want one or two of them to do well and we might make 8% back on our investment. So they're all about oh, across, of, across, across the, their investment. So I've got a billion board. dollars, I'm going right. to invest 100 million in 10. Hopefully that one, two, one or two is going to do well and I might get 1.1 billion back. Fundamentally that is the maths and I'm sure right. it's far better McKinsey, Accenture, uh, maths than that but fundamentally that's what it is so they're all about high growth high growth high growth that's what traditionally vc is what was what it was about and of course that world's changed now maybe we'll talk about that later about profitability and valuations private equity is a bit like the other way private equity is a bit like you've already established yourself and we're going to help you grow into a bigger person so a nice analogy that someone told me the other day was venture capitalists is i've got a plot of land i'm going to go and buy 10 plots of land and hopefully i'll get planning permission for one uh, but I'm really good at buying lots of plots of land. Private equity on the side of the coin is like, actually, you've already got a house. What I'm going to do is I'm going to buy it. I'm going to extend it. I'm going to make it look better. I'm going to make it more marketable. And then I'm going to resell it or reinvest it for more money. So they're kind of more like banks, whereas venture capitalists is more a bit like, we've got a lot of money, we want to invest it. And if you're a company, depending on your maturity, they drive you in different directions. So venture capital is about growth. Private equity is maybe about profitability.